Hello, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the installation of Ricochet aluminum skid plates on a CF Moto Z Force 800. Now the first thing to do in order to get the, uh, the skid plates ready to go on is you need to pull off all the factory guards on the machine. So you have the front A arm uh, protectors, the plastic ones, those need to come off. The center belly skid needs to come off. There's actually a bracket that's bolted here to the frame that protects your engine. That is also going to come off too. That comes way down below the frame and you're actually losing quite a bit of ground clearance. And with the aluminum skids, that's not required anymore. Your engine's going to be much better protected and you're picking up ground clearance. The last thing you need to pull out are there's two bolts in the very back that uh, bolt the hitch on. There's two other bolts behind it. You don't need to take the hitch off. You just need to pull these two bolts out. Those two holes are going to be used to mount the rear skid plate. So once you have everything uninstalled, um, then you're ready to start installing your, uh, your ricochet skid plates. With this set, the uh, front piece actually overlaps the rear, so it's easiest to install, to install from the rear front. So go ahead and get your plate. <coughs> And probably the easiest way to do this is to uh, just get the plate up into position and then start one of the cup washers to uh, hold it in place. Usually I'll do the center one here and you're just gonna just get it started. We're gonna leave everything loose for now until we get everything all mounted up. So. And really the main thing when you're mounting this plate is you want to make sure that these front slots are lined up with the, uh, the hole in the frame. That's where the, uh, the overlap goes. And like I said, we're going to leave everything loose for now. So if we need to move anything around, you know, to align holes or, you know, just get the best fit. That way you're not locked down by uh, something you've already tightened up. Okay, so those cup washers are on. Now you've got this bar clamp, and that's going to pick up these holes right here. Not the very furthest ones back, but these ones right here that have the weldment around it. Okay, so you're going to want to put anti-seize on these bolts. Any of the hardware that we provide that is uh, welded on has a uh, self-locking feature, and a little anti-seize goes a long way towards the ease of installation and also the removal of your plate later down the road if you need to for whatever reason. So a little smear of anti-seize on, on the bolts. The uh, nut plate, you can just reach in from the side. Okay, so both of those are started. And again, you don't want to tighten anything down too hard. And we'll come back to the rear bolts after we uh, get all the other plates on. Okay, so like I said, you want to make sure that you're still aligned with the center here. It looks pretty good. So now we can get the next plate into position. And again, we're just going to kind of hang it with one cup washer. Okay, then you can go through and install the rest. I usually like to do these ones back here. This really is the most critical alignment point on the whole set. That's one thing you want to kind of check is your uh, 
tightening these down, like I say, you're not getting them super tight, but you want to make sure that the, the uh, cup washer is going to seat down flush, that it's not going to hang up on an edge or not sit down. If that's the case, then you're off of alignment a little bit with a hole. But these have a fair amount of adjustability built in, so it's usually not too difficult to get them all lined up. Okay, so now we can go through, do the back two bolts, and that's probably actually easier done through the rear of the from the rear of the machine. The uh, bolt has a uh, two washers, a heavy duty one and a regular one. The heavy duty one is gonna be on the bottom. And that bolt is just gonna run straight up through the hole. And then you're gonna put a washer on that, followed by the nut. And those holes are already there. You just have to remove the bolts that are securing the hitch. Okay, now with the, all of the uh, bolts started for the belly skid, we can go ahead and just tighten those down now. And when I tighten these down again, I usually tighten these ones first, since just that's kind of the most critical alignment. Okay, so that takes care of the uh, belly skids. Um, we have these back four bolts to tighten up. Okay, that takes care of those. And then the very back too, like I say, you'll just hit from the back. room to get my ratchet in there so we'll use a regular hand ratchet and you'll just take your uh, 13 millimeter wrench and grab the nut Okay, so that takes care of the uh, belly skids. Uh, now we can put on the very front skid, the top piece. This is mounted uh, via our clamps and a bar clamp. And you'll want to anti-seize all of these bolts. Okay, and this bar clamp, you're just gonna slide it in here. This one's a little bit easier to get to than the back one. And then you'll uh, take your plate. So 
once you get it started you can let it go start your second bolt and we're just going to leave those loose for now clamp's going to grab this bar right behind it and then just line it up with the hole and get your bolt started and then do the same thing with the other side Okay, once you get those on, you actually want to tighten the front ones first to make sure the plate's all the way back, just for the, uh, the best fit. And then go and tighten these back ones. There you go. That's a good solid installation there. If you don't make sure the plate's all the way back and you tighten these ones first, it can actually kind of pull it forward and it'll kind of pivot and rock since it's not braced. But so you want to make sure you get it all the way back. And that takes care of uh, the front skid plate there. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, demonstrate a front A-arm. The front A-arms mount via two clamps and then a uh, bolt that just picks up the uh, factory mount location. So I usually start that one first just to get the plate on. So you'll set the plate up into position and line up the uh, slot with the bolt hole. And just start that bolt. Take a clamp, put anti-seize on your bolt. And once you get all those started, you can just go ahead and uh, tighten it down. You wanna... This one's pretty good. There's a fair amount of clearance around everything um, compared to some other machines. Um, and then being the man out here, it doesn't really float a whole lot. So you just wanna make sure that you know, you're good, you're not hitting on anything, you got clearance. And if you're good, then go ahead and tighten it down. Tighten down that front one. And then we can tighten down the, uh, the uh, bolt. And that bolt uses a heavy duty washer and then a, uh, a lock nut as well. Okay, now once you get that installed, then you need to turn the wheels from lock to lock and make sure you have clearance all the way around. Yeah, that's pretty good here. You're not running into the rotor, the rotor guard. You're good back here. Let's go the other direction. plenty of clearance the CV boot and that so that's good um, I'm only gonna do the one side just for the sake of the video but it's the exact same thing from left to right okay for the uh, rear arms it's using uh, picking up two of the factory mounts so you've got two bolts and then it's gonna be a nut and a bolt that's gonna run through the a arm and then also a clamp so I usually start with the bolt just to get the uh, skid plate in position These are the, the bolts that you've uh, removed the factory plastic from. The factory plastic has to come off. And 
Now let's do the uh, the bolt. It's got two washers. And they're just both regular washers. It's not a heavy duty washer on this. That's just going to run straight up. It's actually a bit easier to get to from the back side. I'm just going to do that. Just run the bowl up, washer on top, followed by a nut. And then we've got a clamp. You want to put anti seize on that bolt for the clamp. There's a bar that goes across the arm. You're just going to lay that clamp across the bar, line it up with a slot. And start your bolt. Okay, at this point you need to check clearance. It's not as critical on the rear because the wheels don't, you know, pivot to turn the machine. But just make sure you got clearance all the way around. You know, you're not rubbing, hitting on anything. Um, this machine's fairly forgiving, but just a good thing to check. Once you're happy, then you can start tightening down your hardware. Okay, that's good and tight. That completes the uh, rear arm installation. And again, it's the exact same thing for the other side. So for the video, I'm just gonna demonstrate it once. But as you can see with your full belly skid, you've got a pretty flat bottom. Um, you don't have this giant bracket hanging down anymore. You've also got all that, uh, all that aluminum protecting your engine. We've got a weld weldman on our aluminum here to go over that frame gusset there. So it's, that's protected. So as you can see, it's much better than stock. Um, plus it's not plastic, so that's always nice. Um, now let's go ahead and do a floorboard. Okay, so to do the installation of the floorboard, the first thing you need to do is to remove the three factory bolts from the bottom of the plastic here. Um, those bolts will not be reused, and they just they get in the way. We are gonna pick up two of the mounts using new bolts that we supply. So go ahead and uh, unbolt those three bolts, get those out of the way. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you have, uh, you're gonna have three bar clamps. These three bar clamps are gonna go in these channels right here. They look like this. And all you have to do is just feed them up through the channel and then you can lay them down like that. So I've already got all the bar clamps on this machine, but that's how you feed those in. And at that point, you're ready to get the skid in position to start your bolts. And again, you wanna use anti-seize on all these bolts going into any of our clamps, whether it be a bar clamp or a tube clamp or whatever the case may be. So now I'll just take your floorboard skid, get it up into position, and then you've got this access hole here. You can get your finger in there to actually slide that clamp over to line up with the hole. Okay, now we can put the other two bolts in. And these bolts were just picking up the, uh, the factory bolts there. Just the one on the front and the rear. It was a little close to this guy here, so we left that one out. Now to start these, you, this plastic has a tendency to kind of spring out a little bit, so you want to line the plate up and then you might have to push on the plastic a little bit to expose the hole. Sometimes it kind of overhangs the hole a little bit. 
make it a little bit hard to start. There's one there and then one back here. Okay. That looks pretty good, so I think we can just start tightening that down. Okay, those all look pretty good. Now we can just tighten down the uh, two bolts on the side. There we go. All right, that's the floorboard skid installed. As you can see, you've got great protection for you and your passengers from you know sticks and debris coming up through. It's totally boxed in here for the strength. So. That's a pretty good, pretty good set right there. Um, it's the same procedure from left and right, so I'm only going to demonstrate it once for the video. So that demonstrates the uh, aluminum installation on a CF Moto Z Force 800. Thanks for watching.